Okay. One of the common questions that people have is, um, how do I find data in Patrick? Let's say you start with a particular paper that you're interested in. And this particular paper looks at um, brucella for, that they isolated from a frog. And within this paper are a particular group of genes. This was part of the supplementary data for this paper where they show these identifiers here, here are RepSeq identifiers, which anybody who reads scientific papers or publishes scientific papers, you know that these are often what's required by the journal that you provide. So let's say I have, I know, I wanna see if my private genome has these group of genes. The first thing I need to do is to be able to translate these loci, these specific locus tags, into Patrick to find out what Patrick calls them. So I'm just going to grab this entire row here. Slowly but surely, I'll get it all. There we go. And I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to Patrick. Patrick has a special service just to help you do this. So let's click on services, and it's this service called the ID Mapper. So under data, click on ID Mapper. Now you notice that it shows you from Patrick to Patrick. Actually, that seems like something you wouldn't want to do, but it's often a useful function. First, let me put all the features in there. Let me get rid of those just because it, I'm a bit obsessive compulsive and want everything to look nice. And then you notice that the things that these guys were mapping, there are a few genes here that I also want to include, except a couple of these will be problematic. This peg, 0.2153, the ID mapper won't be able to interpret this. And this star behind 19. Uh, 77, that will need to be cleaned up. So let's go back into this tool, scroll down to the bottom, and put those in there too. I, I can fix this. I can go in and remove that, and I can remove that there. And so there's a list of feature IDs that I want to find out what they're called in Patrick. So how do I do this? This says Patrick ID to Patrick ID. Let me open it up here. These are all the identifiers that you can use to map something from Patrick, from any publication or any resource that you have into Patrick. Generally, we put the things that are most commonly used at the top. The loci, lo identifiers that I've placed here are the RepSeq locus tags. I'm going to click that and I'm asking the ID mapper to go from the RepSeq locus tag to the Patrick ID. Now I hit map and then we just wait while Patrick goes through the database and tries to find if there are any matches for those. And sometimes it can be a bit wonky um, if you have, I told you to strip out the special characters and I, some things that don't look good, you won't be able to match. There still might be uh, particular searches that you have to do. So we just wait for it to go. And it says it found that there were 83 source IDs and 78 of those mapped. So if I scroll down, I can see, oh, those are the ones that didn't map, these guys here. But some of these did map. So at some point we could explore why those didn't map and exactly what the problem is there. So this doesn't, this just shows me all those IDs and shows me the maps in Patrick. But what I want to do now is to create a group of these because these names don't tell me anything. These are what um, 
the Patrick identifiers are for particular genes. There are gene loci and we call number identifiers and we call them peg numbers. So I want to see what the names of those things are. So I'm going to click this checkbox here in front of source. So I click all of that and you notice that the vertical green bar suddenly became populated with icons. And these are processes I can do once I have, um, once I've selected all these things. I can download them. I can go look at features and Patrick means genes or proteins. We use the same thing for each one. I can go look at a specific page that brings all of those together. I can look at the genomes for the genes that are selected. And if I look down here, there are two genomes there. So I, if I wanted to see that, I could get the FASTA data, either nucleotide or protein. I could build an alignment, which really you wouldn't want to do because these are all things, for these things, they're all uh, different genes and the alignment would be terrible. I could find out if any of these genes were in a pathway that's been identified in Patrick by K, or I could group them all together. And just because I want to save my, my data, I want to create a group here because I don't want to have to do this again. Although you'll notice that I do these things a lot. So, so it's a feature group. Look, I could create a genome group or a feature group here, but I want these genes. And I'll create a new group and I will call it all Brucella lipopolysaccharide genes and add that. And then it tells me that I've created this group. So remember, it says that there's 78 in this group. How can I see that? Well, let's go into workspaces. And here we have feature groups. Let's click on feature groups. And this is going to open a page that shows you every feature group that you've ever created in Patrick. And I've created a lot of them. To find the one I created most recently, each of these tabs, our column heads are sortable. So if I click on created, I find the most recent one I created. And if I highlight it, once again, the vertical green bar will show me who's there. And I can go, let's, at this time, let's go into the feature view. So it's gonna open a page that summarizes all the data that we have for those features. And it provides an overview which personally I find not as useful as the feature list. So I'm going to click on the feature list and let it load that rather than the overview. So sometimes we have to wait a few seconds while it processes the data, but this will be the place where it will show you all the features that you made in your selection and it'll show you what genome they came from, the ID for that genome, the Patrick ID for each feature locus tag, the RefSeq locus tag, the gene symbol, and the, these are very valuable. The Patrick local family, the Patrick global family, and what the name is in Patrick. And why is this important? Why, why are these more important than this name? Names of genes change frequently. Look, let's look at this one. This one is BEI0118. Here it's called, and if I select it, you can see on the side here that it gives you some additional information about it. So this is what this gene is called in Patrick. Let's go back to the RefSeq, and this is, I'm gonna grab this identifier and use it to search here. And I'm going to search for that identifier. Where is it? Come on. Oh, here it is. Lipid A ethanolamine phosphotransferase. If, this, if I had used this to search for it in Patrick, it would not find it. And we'll, I'll show you that in a second. But this unique identifier, it will find. And just to prove that, let's go back to 
where we were here. So the name is close, but let's see what would have happened if I used the name to try to find that gene. And I'll say here that I want genomic features, which are genes, and I'll search for it. No results found because it's not an exact match. And so that's why you can take a list of identifiers from a paper, the identifiers and not the name, and go into Patrick and use the ID mapping tool to find what Patrick calls your gene. And in a later um, webinar that we'll have, I'll show you how to search uh, for, in, with, for those specific genes within a specific genome group, because that's often a, a question you have. How do I know if my genome has these particular genes or not? 